It takes years for pro wrestlers to make it in the business. To get to the promised land, which is WWE, the wrestlers have to make a lot of sacrifices and things only get more difficult once WWE comes calling. While the opportunity to work in the leading sports entertainment organization on the planet would be too good to resist, the allure of money and fame is too enticing even for the best of independent wrestlers to turn down. While working for WWE is an honor in itself, which is bestowed only upon a select few, not every WWE star gets to live the dream. While hundreds of prospective talent fight amongst themselves for a handful of spots, even those who make the cut don't get to leave the company on their own terms. Considering WWE is the undeniable global leader getting kicked out of the company unceremoniously, even if it is only during the culmination of a storyline, could sound the death knell for a lot of wrestlers. In this video, we take a look at 10 WWE stars who were unceremoniously kicked out of the company either during the culmination of a storyline or in real life. Over the past few years, WWE has been reaching out to stars that they haven't had the best of relationships with over the last few decades. From Wendy Richter to Bruno San Martino and finally the Ultimate Warrior, Triple H and Vince McMahon have extended the olive branch in an effort to ensure that the yesteryear legends are inducted into the Hall of Fame. However, everyone in the wrestling industry was taken by surprise when WWE announced Jeff Jarrett's name earlier this year as a part of the class of 2018. Jarrett managed to get on Vince's bad side when he asked for $300,000 to drop the Intercontinental title. And this was when his contract had run out with the WWE. While Vince paid Jeff what he wanted, McMahon showed his ruthless side when he bought WCW and proceeded to fire Jeff on national television on Raw. Vince vowed to never bring Jarrett to the WWE and nearly two decades later both men put their differences aside and Jeff was inducted into the Hall of Fame. The Weasel was arguably one of the best commentators in the history of pro wrestling and provided numerous moments of laughter with his quick wit and dry humor. Before Heenan went to WCW, he worked with the then WWF where the team of Bobby Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon became one of the most iconic announcing duos in wrestling history. Heenan and Monsoon were the best of friends in real life, but Monsoon hated Heenan's character on air. In 93, Bobby decided to leave the WWE because of their punishing schedule. And to write off Heenan's character, Monsoon literally threw Heenan out of the arena during an edition of Raw, and threw his belongings on the street. Gorilla Monsoon proceeded to fire Heenan, and while no WWE talent would want to be written off this way, it was Heenan's idea to get his comeuppance at the hands of Monsoon, and before long, Bobby signed with WCW. In the world of pro wrestling, there have been a few wrestlers that rub people the wrong way and back in the 90s, Warrior was one of them. The Ultimate Warrior was earmarked to replace Hulk Hogan as the face of WWE in the early 90s, but Warrior shot himself in his foot when he wrote to Vince McMahon, saying that he wouldn't appear on WWE programming unless he was paid more. While Vince initially succumbed to Warrior's demands, the chairman of the board showed his ruthless side once the Ultimate Warrior returned to perform at SummerSlam. Vince suspended Warrior and in 92 released the Ultimate Warrior because of the steroid scandal. This wouldn't be the only time Vince would kick Warrior out of the company as the Ultimate Warrior returned to WWE in 96 but was once again unceremoniously kicked out of the company for no-showing several house shows. While Warrior alleged that he took time off to grieve his father's death, Vince McMahon did not believe the star and terminated his contract. For the majority of her WWE tenure, Vicky Guerrero played the role of a power-hungry general manager who would go to great lengths to make the lives of her adversaries difficult. While the fans were initially hesitant to boo the wife of the late great Eddie Guerrero, it didn't take long for Vicky to cement her status as one of the top heels. With Vicky's character being a conniving, despicable authority figure, the fans took great pleasure in watching Vicky get her comeuppance when she was fired as the GM of SmackDown and Raw. However, when Vicky told the management that she would be quitting the company to pursue a different career, her character was written off with Vicky losing a pudding match. While the sight of Vicky covered in pudding and waddling around wasn't pretty, she ultimately turned face for the first time in years throwing Stephanie McMahon into the mud pool before doing the patented Eddie Guerrero shuffle. When Muhammad Hassan started building momentum on SmackDown, it looked as though WWE had found their next great heel. Following in the footsteps of the Iron Sheik and Sergeant Slaughter, Hassan started delivering anti-American and pro-Islamic promos which made him one of the most hated villains on the main roster. 
While everybody thought Hassan would become the next world champion in the company, he ended up getting kicked out of the WWE for no fault of his own. In fact, it was just bad timing and WWE was forced to write off Hassan's character. Hassan led a group of masked men to take out The Undertaker, and as fate would have it, the London bombings happened during the same week. This left the company in a predicament, and with the pressure mounting from the UPN, Hassan's character was written off and the superstar was soon released from the promotion. Brock Lesnar today is considered to be one of the greatest athletes of this generation and the superstar showed what he was capable of during his first run with the WWE. Lesnar was given the WWE title making him the youngest champion in history and Vince McMahon put a lot of faith and trust in the star. However, Vince would rue this decision of pushing Brock to the moon so soon when the superstar would decide to quit the WWE after WrestleMania 20. Lesnar was scheduled to face Goldberg at WrestleMania, with Goldberg finishing up his WWE commitments after WrestleMania as well. Brock was initially booked to win the match, but when the officials got to know about Lesnar's plans, they changed the finish and Goldberg was booked to go over at the Showcase of the Immortals. Both Lesnar and Goldberg were booed by the fans in Mania, and both the stars put on arguably the worst match in Mania history. After the match, Lesnar flipped off the fans, but was sent packing by Austin with a stunner, and the youngest WWE Champion in history was unceremoniously booted from the company. During the 90s, no one managed to push Vince McMahon to his limits quite like Eric Bischoff. With Eric at the helm, WCW defeated the WWE for 84 consecutive weeks in the rating wars, and Monday Nitro became the favorite destination for the wrestling fans. However, Vince McMahon fired back, and with Steve Austin spearheading the Attitude Era, WWE soon won the war, and WCW went out of business in 01. Vince McMahon then hired the one person who nearly put him out of business, naming Eric Bischoff the new GM of Raw in 2002. Eric served as the general manager till 2005, and when he wanted to take time off to work on his book, Vince McMahon fired him on air and dumped him in a garbage truck when he was then driven out of the arena. This was also the culmination of years of injustice dished out by Bischoff, and the fans and wrestlers were happy to see Eric being tossed into a garbage truck to write him off TV. While most of the stars mentioned in this list were written off TV in a variety of demeaning ways, it was seen as their comeuppance, which was a long time coming. However, WWE's treatment of Lita towards the end of her career left a bad taste in the mouths of the more ardent wrestling fans who watched Lita revolutionize the women's division in the WWE. The fans turned on Lita as well as Edge after Matt Hardy revealed the details of their real-life affair and the duo would be booed out of arenas for years. While Lita and Edge turned heel and thrived as the bad guys, Lita deserved a better send-off. Lita wrestled her final match at Survivor Series in 2006 where she defended the women's title against Mickey James. While Lita deserved a send-off similar to Trish where Trish walked into the sunset as the women's champion, Lita dropped the title to James and after the match her stuff was pawned off by crime time in a host sale and Lita had to walk to the back with tears in her eyes as the fans booed her. Among the multitude of disrespectful things WWE has done to its talent, Lita's send-off ranks at the top. Wendy Richter helped the WWE go mainstream when she, along with Cindy Lauper and Captain Lou Albano, ushered in the Rock and Wrestling Connection. Wendy held the WWE Women's title in 1985 and wanted the women to get compensated better in the WWE. With her contract coming up soon, Vince McMahon wanted to get the title off her and brought in Fabulous Moolah to do the dirty work. At Madison Square Garden, Moolah, with the help of the referee, screwed Wendy and snatched the title away from her. Richter initially did not understand what was going on, but once she unmasked Spider Lady and found Moolah under the mask, she understood what happened and immediately walked out of the company and left for the airport directly from the ring. It was thought that Wendy would never return to the WWE and two decades later would be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Vince and Moolah conspired together to throw Wendy under the bus, and the former women's champion vowed to never wrestle for Vince McMahon again. Bret Hart was on the verge of leaving WWE and had already agreed to join WCW in 97, but first had to face Shawn Michaels at Survivor Series. Vince could not take the risk of letting Bret leave Canada with the WWE title, while Bret refused to drop the championship to Shawn in his hometown. 
This led to the most infamous incident in modern wrestling history as Bret was screwed out of the WWE title by Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon. Shawn was crowned the new WWE Champion while Bret was unceremoniously kicked out of the company not before Bret punched Vince for double crossing him. Bret then went to WCW and competed until 2000 before retiring from the business. And these are 10 WWE superstars who were kicked out of the company unceremoniously. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching Wrestling Hub, and I'll see you later with more videos. This is a Chucky Beat production.